Hi, welcome back. We were able to define the geometry and we define the mesh. Today is now part two, we are going, whereby we are going to define the governing equations and we are going to define the boundary conditions. Using the Fluent, right click on the setup and select edit so that the Fluent can start. Here you can use double precision if you want to use 64 bits. Um, it's a simple model, you can just say start. Once you open the Fluent, uh, this is what you see on the first page. Um, this one is our geometry, the one we defined. As you can see, we have entry and outlet. Uh, you can start by general here you can first for check the mesh you can do the check first when you check the mesh you can see we have the mesh is already done we don't have any error if there's no mesh once you check the mesh you, you, you couldn't get anything then we can now double check on the parameters you defined that was uh, 3 meter by 0 0.1 meter by selecting scale as you can see now for the scale here it is 0 to 3 meter along the x axis y axis is 0 to 0 0.1 these are the values we defined when you are creating this geometry and next we can select display if what you want to see you can see now everything is selected here the, remember these are the but these are the named selections you defined when you are meshing. If you want to deselect everything, do like that. You can select this one, inlet, you can see the inlet. This will be outlet, center line. You can see the center line, pipe wall, and uh, flow domain. Yeah, these are some of the initial parameters you have to double check whether you have defined your parameters well. Um, there's something I want to explain concerning the this section here. One is a solver. We are going to use default that is a pressure based. Uh, these two do not affect the mathematical model, but it affects how the solver solves the mathematical model therefore we're going to leave them as a default for the pressure based formulation we are going to use absolute and they're using a steady state not a transient but for the 2d space remember this one is a flow through a cylindrical pipe a cylindrical pipe is usually axis symmetric Therefore, you have to switch from planar to axis symmetric. Once you select this, these are the equations that, that are going to be solved. You can see this one are for the axis symmetric, the reason why we have R here. And for us to solve this governing equation, you only need to provide density, rho, and viscosity, mu. And these are the parameters already defined in our program specs. Therefore, once you select axis symmetric, those are the two parameters you need to define. Um, next, we need to go to the now to define our model. If you double select the model here, remember we are using a uh, laminar flow for the viscous here double select the vis viscous i will explain later what we mean by all this once you start the turbulence flow but not as a laminar just select the laminar okay and we are not using energy equations are off at the multiphase everything has to be off but we are focusing on the laminar flow today uh, if you go now to the material fluid, if you double click air, I want now to create my own material.
instead of using air, I want to use my, let me say my water, fluid that is a fluid. Then these parameters is very important on how you define these parameters because they, they are the parameters that we have to capture them here, rho and mu. Therefore, remember if I go back to the problem spec, this was my density. Um, this was my density and it's my viscosity. And these parameters combined, they give a Reynolds number of 100. This is 100 here. We know that, how do you get a Reynolds number? A Reynolds number is density multiplied by velocity. You multiply by the diameter. You divide it by mu. Mu is a viscosity. If you do this, the density is 1. If you multiply by velocity at the inlet, 1, then 0 0.3 is our, is our diameter, multiplied by 0 0.3, um, not 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Then, if you divide by, um, you have to divide by 2, 2 times 10 to power negative 3. This becomes this becomes a hundred because it becomes a zero point two times a thousand divided by two. This becomes a hundred. Okay. That becomes a hundred. Therefore, we are going to define these parameters here. Density, we are using a constant value of 1. And uh, the viscosity is 2 e to power 3. We have to use uh, 2 e to power 3. Then say create. Yeah, yes, just overwrite. Therefore, my water here is the, these are the values of the, my liquid, that is uh, one and this. Um, next is, if you close this, let's go to the boundary conditions. We have defined, we have defined general model, then material have defined. Um, let's see this one here. Let's first for leave this for now. For, for the cell zone, leave it for now. Let's go to the boundary conditions here. Double click the boundary conditions so that we define the parameters. We start by inlet. You can see type is a velocity inlet. And you can edit these parameters here. Once you select edit parameters, I'm using components because I want to define velocity along x-axis as axial velocity of 1. Uh, I'm going to leave supersonic at initial gauge pressure as 0 because we are not, we are not simulating high velocity domain. It is just a low velocity domain. Uh, yeah, if, you are, if you want to do analysis of high velocity, Supersonic speeds, you can now define these parameters here. Last one, fine. Outlet, you can see there's an outlet pressure. If you go to these parameters, uh, we are going to see that the gauge pressure is zero. This is the gauge pressure. Uh, don't confuse by this pressure. This one is not a gauge pressure, this one is absolute pressure. It's not a gauge pressure. You can do some research on hot gauge pressure versus absolute pressure. If, if you go on the operating conditions, here is where you define the now there that pressure. This one is a one atmosphere. This one is operating condition of one atmosphere. 
that is uh, defined here. For now, I'm not considering gravity, effects of gravity. Um, for the center line, most of the time, it doesn't recognize center line as an axis, you can see. Therefore, for the center line, you have to, se you have to select axis. Apply, therefore, the center line is your axis. Okay, if you go to the wall, if you go to the parameters of the wall, let's see, you can see now that this is the pipe wall. Momentum, the wall is stationary. If the wall is moving, you can define here, but now it's stationary. Shear condition, we don't, for now we are going to have zero velocity. All the water particles along this wall will have zero velocity, no slip. But if you have some specified shear or specularity coefficient, you can define. Yeah, for now you can define here, you can see these are the shear values. But for now, let's go with a no slip wall. Let's use a no slip wall. Um, close. This flow domain, interior flow domain, we don't have to define anything. It's just an interior flow domain. I think that's all. That's the sufficient information we have defined. Once you have defined those that information, we can now solve these equations. These equations are for the axis metric. And the, you just need to define um, density and viscosity. Then the software solver will take care of the rest. In my next video, now we are going to to see how we can now run this model and generate some results, do some analysis. Thank you. Stay tuned for more.